Section 11 of the Estate Duty Act gives us instructions and tells us who is liable to pay the estate duty. Now for the most part, the estate duty is payable by the person who's passed away, that person's estate. So the executor is the person that looks after your estate when you pass away. So basically it's the executor that will pay it. But understand, it's not the executor's liability, it's just their responsibility to pay it across because they have to finalize your estate. So for the most part, if I die, this is what I'm trying to say, if I die, I, my estate, I will be liable for the estate duty. However, there are a couple of situations where another person will be paying the estate duty, and Section 11 tells us that. And they tell us, guys, it's basically just these people. Any person that receives a use of fruct, a bare do minimum of fiduciary interest, any person that receives an annuity from your estate, any person that receives a life insurance policy, and any person that receives a donation mortis causa. Okay, so let me explain to you. So let's say we have property of, I'm just going to make it a big number, 10 million rands. And in that property, there is life insurance that will go to my uh, brother. And there's a donation, mortis causa. So I say to my best friend, I'm going to go skydiving today. If I die, then you can get my watch. And my watch, let's say, it's a 500,000 rands watch, because I'm rocking it like that. Um, and the life insurance was 2 million rands. Okay, now, basically what this means for us is that is 12.5 million rands. There's no deductions in my example, just to make it simple. From that, you have your section 4A abatement of 3.5. Okay, so 9 million rands. So the estate duty, which is calculated at 20%, is obviously 1.8 million. Okay, now, section 11 says the person who receives the life insurance. And the person who receives the donation will just cows up. They must pay their state duty on their share. So the reason behind this is, there's obviously going to be tax calculated on that life insurance. And it's unfair towards everybody else in the estate if that life insurance is going to be taxed in the estate, but the brother is the person who's going to be receiving the money. So it's unfair towards everybody else and the rest of the dependents. There might also be a situation where there's not enough money in the estate and they have to take it out of that 2 million rands. So that is why those people have it. So what will happen is you'll do the following. So the life insurance and the mortis causa. So the life insurance was 2 million rands. So you'll say 2 million out of this 12 and a half times my estate duty of 1.8 million. Right, it's 288,000. Donation mortis causa, same story. 500,000 rands, which is its value, over the net value of the estate, times the estate duty. It's 72,000. Okay, so, the executor, The executor will pay the balance. So, right, let me explain. So, all of this must add up to 1.8 million. So, the executor will pay the remaining balance. All right. So, that is basically what is meant by Section 11. So, study what is included. It's easy, guys. Limited interest, annuities, life insurance, donation models, causa. It takes a few seconds to remember that. Then, if you're married in community of property, so Mr. A and Mrs. A are married in community of property. So that means the assets are considered to belong to both of them. If Mr. A passes away now, the assets that belong to him, which is the same assets that belong to Mrs. A, must be subject to a state duty. But now it doesn't make sense that you can obviously tax this one person on the full value of the asset. So there's a process that we have to follow. So, 
How it will work is basically as follows. If there were any assets in the estate that belonged to the deceased person before the marriage, so that's before they were married in community property, that is not split between the deceased and the spouse. In other words, let's say Mr. A had a house before he got married to Mrs. A, so that house is not in the joint estate. So that's what they're trying to say. If it's not in joint estate, that person only gets taxed on it. If it is in the joint estate, it is split. Now, the process to do this works as follows. I want you to see here. So you are going to first up calculate the dutable amount as usual. And this is going to be on 100% of assets. So what I mean by that is, does not split 50-50 between spouses. So you treat Mr. A, or the person has passed away, as if they own the whole asset. You will then add back any funeral and deathbed expenses because that is only allowed as a deduction for the person who's passed away. That answer times 50% gives you the joint value of the estate, the, the share that the deceased person belongs to. You will then deduct your deathbed expenses from that and do the rest of the calculation. So how do we calculate estate duty in general? This is what we're going to do. First up, guys, you will say what is the total amount of property what is the amount of deemed property? And you can combine this two under a heading called property and deemed property. You will then deduct deductions in terms of section 4. So remember to work for all of them. From that you will deduct your 3.5 million rand section 4 abatement. Taking into account if there is any spouse that will increase it. Multiply that by 20%. You will apply any rebates. If there are any rebates, such as the foreign death rebate, and then you will calculate who is liable for the estate duty. And guys, number six is not too common. So everything else, very straightforward. It's a great place to score marks.